Well, what is going on, everyone? Welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG, the morning after pre-release for Lord of the Rings. We're going to do another collector box opening, this time for my friend and yours. You may remember uh, him as the person who pulled the one of 7,000 on our live stream uh, the other day. So, Quentin, good luck, my friend. Uh, this is going to be fun. This is our fourth in a series of, I think, six box openings uh, where we're just posting regular videos. We will be back to normal content uh, next week week hopefully i'm just trying to get people's boxes open and uh man that hunt for the one ring is real it is uh driving lots of single pack sales in the store and it's fun to watch opening so here we go one two three Ooh, the glittering caves of Alrond. Gemstone Caverns is a huge hit. Uh, the surge foil of this we're seeing in uh, like $800 about that. Uh, but this even, I think I've already sold a couple of those at the, the $80 price point, the $60 to $80. So uh, really great hit, Quentin. You're off to a good start, my friend. I want to know from you in the comment section, if you went to pre-release, how was it? Did you have fun? And did you enjoy this set? No serialized card in your first pack, my friend. Did you enjoy this set? Because my store, everyone loved it. Everybody had a blast playing. Uh, Shark Reef. We got Rampaging War Mammoth. Gollum, the really gorgeous artwork there in Gollum. Uh, ooh, Caracas. Dude, this is going to be one of those boxes. You can feel it coming. Storm of Saruman. We've seen a couple of these boxes where it's just loaded with those... Um, those uh, realms and relics, which are holding better value than I would have thought. So is the one ring. The one ring is holding better value than I would have thought. There's a lot of things in this set that so far seem to be holding value better than I would have intent. It would have believed or would have predicted. I think that that is because people are collecting sets, which is wild because um, this set's massive. Golem. This is part of the full artwork. The bundles are selling like crazy in store uh, because of that artwork. Everyone kind of saying this is the, the best bundle they've ever seen uh, for Magic. I kind of agree with that. Like the value inside of that bundle is is absolutely insane. If if the one ring continues to hold in price, that really holds true. But people just wanted to walk home yesterday with one ring. Speaking of the one ring, we have seen we've started to see ooh Storm of Saruman gorgeous artwork and we have started to see some fakes of the one ring popping up from booster box opening videos oops as i drop a card sorry my friend uh oh fangorn the tree shepherd our, our mythics have been interesting here we're starting to see some fakes and you're going to see a lot of them you're going to see a lot of fakes in this set of the one ring here's some ways to know if it's actually a serialized card the you know the the embossed uh the logo the serialized thing is actually embossed uh so if if they hold it and you, you don't see any like reflection here uh that's how you know it's fake oh radagast the brown gorgeous card look at that artwork the artwork in the set is what really oh, sarman that is the better commander in the deck, everyone. It is the better commander. You, you, prove me wrong, but that is the better commander in the deck. Ooh, Nazgul and Foil and another Saruman. Oh my gosh, dude. What a pack. Uh, the Nazguls are selling pretty well, too. I think the non-foil ones are like a dollar or two dollars uh, because there's different nine different arts. So people are like they just did stuff like that in the set that's driving so much value um in the packs like this is why you're seeing booster boxes for 460 dollars. it's not the one ring it's that every single thing they did in the set oh my gosh like bajuku bop it's gorgeous this is a this is a 30 cent card but in this version it's going to be worth more just because of the way they did the oh and shadow of the enemy just because of the way they did that whole subset it's just perfect shadow of the enemy gorgeous that subset, there are so many people I've talked to who pull one or two of those subset cards and then they say, man, I just want all of them. Their first initial reaction isn't what's the value and can I sell it? Their first initial reaction is I want all of the subset because the cards are iconic um, for magic. And then the artwork and the, the tie to Lord of the Rings was so well done that they're all about it. Sorry, the Necromancer. Wizards Rockets, that's part of that full art thing. And Frodo Sarin's Bane. 
Um, so singles prices, I think, are still. I mean, this is coming from somebody who's selling lots of singles on T2G Player right now. Singles prices, I still think, are pretty inflated. Um, I think there will be a, a time where people are kind of uh, over the set collecting side, and there will still be boxes to be open. Um, there is going to be a chunk of these boxes that don't get. I honestly, I'm, I'm kind of of the feeling that that one ring is going to stay in a box that's not open at this point. We've seen a ton of boxes open in the community. Um, and, ooh, Gladrail, beautiful artwork. We've seen a ton of boxes opened in the community. And if it doesn't get open this week, this is like the initial shock of opening, then I'm going to say there's a high likelihood that it stays not open, which is going to be, that's going to be, I don't know what happens. That That's, ooh, Glamdring, this is a cool card. I love the equipment in the set too, because the equipment feels the, 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 when you go up against Frodo, it feels like you're being forced into the Lord of the Rings and it, it kind of takes me out of magic a little bit. We've talked about that on the channel, but the equipment feels, I don't know. It just feels different. I guess maybe because I don't know the equipment name. Uh, and then the artwork's just so cool on them. Like, I don't know the name of the equipment Balrog there. I don't, because I'm not a huge Lord of the Rings fan, but I know who Frodo is. I know who Gandalf is. So that kind of takes me out of the magic side of it. Uh, but the the equipment is also really powerful. And, oh man, those serialized. It's really powerful. And because I don't know the name of it, I kind of like it. Uh, Goldberry, the ring goes south to West Virginia where we're going to open it. Rapish, ra rapacious, great. Funny artwork there. All right, Legolas. Oh, this is the one I want to play. That's the all oh, sort of hearth and stone. Gorgeous, dude. All right, so you got three of those, I think. Gray Havens, Mirkwood Bats. Like, this is selling for like two or three bucks. And Aragorn, King of Gondor. Another extended art mythic foil from the commander set. Those are good hits. Quentin, you got three packs left, my friend. You've already pulled a one of 7,000 non serialized on the channel. Can we pull you a real serialized ring? That's the question. The watcher in the water. He's watching. He's waiting. Bilbo's birthday celebrant. Uh, the serialized cards seem way more difficult to pull than any other set. Orcish Bowmasters. Heck yeah. This card just continues to do well. Pippin, that Orcish Bowmasters, if you play black and commander... And you open your packs and you don't hit an Orcish Bowmasters. I think you should be looking over the next uh, two weeks to see when the, then when that card dips down and start picking up them to, to put in your commander decks. Because that card is going to be a commander staple. And Call of the Ring. The Feasting Hobbit. See, the artwork's funny. The artwork, All the Hobbit artwork's funny. Nazgul. Elrond, Master of Healing. Gothmog, Morgul, Lieutenant. All right, here we go. We got to pull something good here. Rivendale. We've got no Gandalfs. Last pack, Quentin. Hopefully you uh, are enjoying this set. I know you've opened quite a bit because you've opened quite a bit on the channel. So let's see if we can get you a serialized ring here in the close. Ah, oh, dang. Nope, we did not. But you've got, your, your good, you've got some good stuff. We'll do a little recap here because you got some good stuff. This is what I'm saying. You don't need a serialized card in the set to do well. Mount Doom. Beautiful. You don't need the serialized card in the set. Which is different from a lot of the other collector boxes where you do. Delighted Halfling. That's like a $13 card. Um, cool. Awesome. Okay, Quentin. You did pretty good. You got a decent chunk of Mythics. You're really... Uh, this is a huge hit. To start the box off with a $50 to $60, $70 card is a is a huge win. And then you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen of the uh the, the mythics. I think three of those were the realms and relics. So very good job, Quentin. Thank you so much for allowing me to open your box. You guys let me know in the comment section how you're enjoying this set. I would I want to hear your honest takes on it. Obviously if you're clicking the videos you're you're somewhat interested in it. But Tell me what, what you enjoyed about pre-release. Tell me what you're enjoying about the set. I'd love to know. Hopefully you're having yourself a great weekend and a great day. Be kind to the people around you. And we'll see you again next video.